Welcome back to The Price of Business. I am your host, Kevin Price, talking to me about you and your business. Got my good friend, Ed Heiselmeyer on. Uh, Edmund Heiselmeyer, he is a senior research fellow, health policy studies uh, there at the Heritage Foundation, one of the country's premier think tanks. Thank God I've known Ed now for 30 years, almost exactly. In fact, I think it's 31 years. Uh, so I've had plenty of uh, years to practice your last name. How are you, Edmund? Good to have you on. I'm fine. It has been a long time, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think we met in, in uh, 1982. Something and, like uh, that, yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. God, it just seems like yesterday. And uh, consider you a great thinker. I've always thought of you a great thinker, uh, even when I wouldn't admit that to you to your face, um, because, you know, friends just don't do that. But uh, I, I consider you a great thinker and uh, a, really a thought leader when it comes to uh, health care and, and delighted we can get you on, uh, particularly under such short notice, to be a guest on my program today. Yeah, no, sure, happy to do it. So uh, tell us exactly, uh, you know, what your thoughts are of the state of health care with Obamacare, really specifically the state of Obamacare, if you will. Well, it's it's falling apart fairly quickly. Um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and, I think, confusion about where this all goes. To me, it's pretty clear what the end point is going to be on this. The end point is really uh, that it collapses into something that looks like a giant high-risk pool Medicaid expansion for people between one and two times the poverty level. Um, uh, so it's kind of a Medicaid expansion plus. Um, and basically people who are above that uh, level in terms of income, they're going to find ways to avoid it, really. And yeah. that's what we're in the sorting out process. So all this stuff about whether they get young, healthy people in or not, it really doesn't change the outcome. It just changes the timing. In other words, if you got a lot of young, healthy people enrolled right away, it would take a number of years for this to sort of evolve. Uh, if it continues the way it's going now, this thing could you know, be cratering into just this kind of very limited plan by next year. Because what's also going to happen is that you're going to see insurers exit this. The ones that will stay will be the Medicaid managed care companies. Yep. Let me and ask, they're already in there. Let me let me just ask you then, uh, there's this theory, kind of a strong theory out there, that uh, the mishap is somewhat by design. And then at the end, is it's meant to prove that um, a hybrid approach of government and private won't work, and the only thing that will work is the public option. And this is designed to pave the way for the public option. You you don't think so? I uh, no. I I I I yeah. When, whenever you have a choice between incompetence and conspiracy, go with incompetence. <laughs> uh, and in this case, I think they're proving that out. Uh, yeah. No. And the reason is because there's the reason I believe that is because there are outcomes that result from this that they, from their own viewpoint, would not have intended. Uh, and, and see, this is the thing that I think is being missed, and, and I'm going to be writing about this next year. This is actually going to have a sort of Newtonian equal and opposite reaction. And I'll give you just a taste of that. I don't know if you've seen or any of your listeners have seen these things called private exchanges. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, this is what's going on. If you're a large employer, you don't have to comply with the essential benefit mandates in Obamacare. You just have to offer what you think is a good benefit package, and you do have to cover the preventive services, but otherwise you've got a lot of flexibility to design your own package. And anybody who's self-insured certainly can do that, even if they're not a large employer. So what's going on? Well, what's happened is that I believe, and I've seen this, you know, that the idea of doing defined contribution and empowering the worker and letting them pick the plan instead of the employer picking it for them, which is something that these companies have done in the pension side, they're not going to move in the healthcare side on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what does that mean? Well, it means that big consulting firms like A. N. Hewitt and Mercer and Towers Parent are setting up to broker this. And they're bringing to the table the big employers with lots of employees and the big insurers. So look at this. Walgreens has put 130,000 people into this private exchange arranged by Aon Hewitt. They're going to have a much more consumer-directed, Obamacare mandate-free set of options. Mm -hmm. 
That's the opposite reaction. Now, look at what's going on with the insurers. Of all the insurers in the exchange, the one that is in the most states is Aetna, and they're only in 16 states. Wow. That's the, no other insurer is in more states than Aetna, and Aetna's only in 16. But if you go to the A.N. Hewitt private exchange, where Walgreens is going to be providing coverage to 130,000 people around the country, Aetna's in there. Yeah, you can get Aetna across the country from them. Yeah, and what's so you interesting see what's going to was, happen? Yeah, see absolutely. How market splits. Yeah, and one of the problems they had all along is that some states only had two or three uh, carriers to begin with. Texas had more than most, although they were losing a bunch because, let's face it, the state legislatures in some of these states uh, chased off uh, health care providers. Well, it's, it's not only that, but also the nature of the market. I did a paper on this, and, and it was published in November, where I analyzed all the insurers that are in the exchange and looked at them compared to the ones that stayed out. And there were a couple of things that came out of that. The insurers who are principally, I looked at the patterns, the insurers who are principally individual market insurers, they're not anywhere to be found. They're not in this at all. Okay, uh, The ones that are in it are the dominant Blue Cross plans, by and large. That's no big surprise. Uh, then you have insurers whose main business is selling to uh, employer groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, like in Texas, I think Scott and White or something, you know, is one of those. And Kaiser, that's another one. And they're looking at losing some of that business if the employers drop coverage. And the way to keep those people is to go to the exchange and offer coverage. So by two to one, those insurers are going in. Um, the in, really big insurers, the Aetna Cygnus United, that really deal most of their business is really not insurance, it's administrative services for self-insured larger employers. I mean, that's 85% of Cygnus enrollment, and mm-hmm. 60% of Aetna's, and 54% of United. They're hardly in the exchanges. As I said, Aetna's in 16 you, uh, United so the, the exchanges are already states. limping, and they, you know, and they've only just started. I mean, it's it's almost. Yeah. It's, it's, but it's but the ones that are humorous. going in are the Medicaid managed care plans. Yeah, yeah. So do you see? Um, do you see something? Eleven in Texas are Medicaid managed care plans. Yeah, and so uh, as, uh, they're kind of out of their element to a certain extent, aren't they? Well, no, they're looking at this. The Medicaid managed care plans are looking at this, and this is my whole point. They say, this thing looks just like Medicaid. Okay, we know how to do that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Edmund Heiselmeyer, he's a senior research fellow at the Heritage Foundation, heritage.org. That's heritage.org. Is there another shoe that you expect to drop soon uh, when it comes to uh, Obamacare? Uh, well, I, I, I'm looking for several of them. Uh, yeah, one will be, the, the, the most immediate one will be the one we've been hearing about, but it really won't get, uh, uh, it'll start getting more attention in January. People who thought they'd enrolled and signed up, and they haven't seen an insurance card come in the mail, so they contact the company, and the company is like, who are you? We have no record of you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because it never got to them from the exchange. Right. And That's then, kind of the January story. I and, think. and there's a plethora of people out there who are not even sure if they're in because they didn't pay at the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, kind of a crazy thing. And so, uh, but you're saying as early as next thing, uh, next year, this thing could implode to something well, here, significantly less than it was supposed to be. Well, here's here's the thing to watch for. Sometime by late spring, uh, possibly early summer at the latest, they're going to have to know. Uh, from the insurers, both the ones that went in this year and the ones that haven't, uh, you know, are you in or out next year? Yep. Well, we're going to have that information. And, of course, as I said, I did a paper. I've tracked all of this so I can compare it and I can see who wasn't in that's going in, if anybody, Mm -hmm. and who uh, has tried offering on the exchange this year and threw in the towel and isn't signing up for a second year. And if this thing keeps going the way it's going – you could have a lot fewer insurers offering coverage next year. Very interesting. Good point to end on. Ed Heiselmeyer, Edmund Heiselmeyer, Senior Research Fellow, 
health policy studies there at the uh, country's con- premier conservative think tank, Heritage Foundation, Heritage.org. Uh, Ed and I uh, first met at, uh, I believe, at the National Center for Public Policy Research, where we both worked. And back then, I think we were called Ren a Riot, if I recall. But uh, <laughs> Well, we were doing anti-Soviet things in those that's days. That's right. It was that a lot was of fun, though. We, we were kind of, you know, the conservatives' response to uh, the left radicals, and we had a lot of fun with that. Heritage.org. Check out Ed, uh, Edmund Heisemeyer while there. Good to talk to you, my old friend. Take care. Hey, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. All right. When we come back, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here shows up over there at USCTheReview.com.